Hello, this presentation is the last of four presentations which provide an introduction to assistive technology for computer access. Part 1 was an overview of assistive technology, Part 2 covered assistive technology for monitors, Part 3 provided an overview of the assistive technology for keyboards, and this last part will cover the various types of assistive technology mice. Please note that this presentation will advance by itself. All you need to do is observe and listen. I will read and explain all information as we go along. This presentation will cover the following topics. Why are mice such a problem? What types of assistive technology mice are available? The features of these assistive technology mice? And some of the new software solutions for mousing problems. If you do not have any problems using a standard mouse at this time, you may still find some information in this presentation, presentation useful to improve your use of the mouse. The first topic we are going to cover is why mice are such a problem. Our mousing problems arise from the resulting position that is required to operate a mouse. First, you must be able to bend your elbow. Then you must be able to turn your forearm so that your palm is facing down. Next, you must be able to pull your wrist up. You also have to be able to grip the mouse using your thumb and little finger and move your wrist or arm in a side-to-side -side and circular motion. You have to be able to move your shoulder away from your body. And finally, you must be able to click the mouse buttons repeatedly with your index finger. This position may be difficult or impossible for somebody with a disability. Even if you can do all of these movements, problems may arise when you do them for hours at a time. The body was not designed to sustain this kind of activity for a prolonged period. Unfortunately, we get so involved in using the computer that we lose our awareness of our body position. If I asked you to sit in the position that you use for typing, and to hold that position for the next eight hours while you watch TV, you would find that very tiring. As with the keyboard, assistive mice are only an option. Many problems can be averted by adopting good posture habits, positioning the mouse according to ergonomic principles, taking regular breaks, and stretching on a regular basis. Now let's take a look at what types of assistive technology mice are available. I have organized the various types of assistive technology mi mice into the following following categories. Contoured mice, vertical mice, touch pads, trackballs, joysticks, hands-free pointers, and finally, software solutions. Next, let's cover some of the main features of these assistive technology mice. First, let's start with the contoured mice. There are a variety of contoured mice available on the market today. These mice are similar to standard mice, but are designed to fit the shape of your hand. Some provide an elevated wrist support and a thumb support. They are available in a variety of sizes. This particular model comes in small, medium, and large. Although many contoured mice are only available in right-handed versions, a few have both right and left-handed versions. If you go to your local Staples or Office Depot, you'll find many contoured mice for sale. Next time you're in either of those stores, take a moment to try out the various mice to see which kind fit your hand. You may be surprised at how many different shapes have been developed for the common computer mouse. The next type of mice we will look at are called vertical mice. These mice have been designed with a vertical orientation. If you take a standard mouse and hold it so that the right hand edge is on the desk, you will have the shape of a vertical mouse. The mouse is designed this way in order to eliminate twisting of your forearm while gripping it. For many people with hand and wrist issues, the vertical positioning of the hand can feel more comfortable. However, to click with this mouse, you must be able to stabilize it using your thumb. Because of this requirement, it may not be a suitable mouse for someone who has finger issues. Touchpads are a fairly common mouse option, as they are built into most laptop computers. In order to control the mouse movement, you need to glide your fingers across the surface of the touchpad. To click the mouse, you can either tap the surface or click the buttons. 
This mouse can be purchased as a separate item or can be built into a keyboard. To use this mouse, you require fine motor skills and the ability to touch the surface with only one finger at a time. The next mouse we will look at is called a trackball, and these are the most popular of the assistive technology mice available. If you remember the original mice, they were designed with a round rubber ball on the bottom. As you moved the mouse around the desk, the ball would roll and the sensors inside the mouse would communicate the movement to the computer. With a trackball, the ball is now on top of the unit and you can roll it with any part of your hand or body. This means that the trackball does not require grasping and dragging like a standard mouse. For many people with disabilities, the rolling of a trackball is much easier action to control. Also, with the trackball it is easy to move the mouse, then remove your hand from the ball and click the buttons as a separate action. This trackball is quite often recommended for people who have repetitive strain injuries in their hands to people who are quadriplegic and have some arm control, but no finger control. Another advantage of the trackball is that it requires less room on your desk than a standard mouse. Trackballs are available in a variety of shapes and sizes. On some models, the buttons can be custom programmed to provide such actions as double clicking and a drag lock feature. This makes it very effective and a versatile assistive technology mouse. The next type of mice we look at are called joysticks. Joystick mice look very similar to the joysticks that you may see on a power wheelchair. They are easy to grasp. Most have changeable handles. When you release the joystick, it will automatically center. They have a specialized drag lock button built into them to assist when highlighting text or moving objects on the screen. Some models also have a removable keyguard, which is similar to the keyguard available for keyboards. The joystick mouse can be a good option for mouse control for someone who experiences a lot of spasms and tremors. The next category of mice are hands-free pointers. The head mouse is the most popular of the hands-free devices for mouse control. With a head mouse, there is a small unit which sits on top of your computer monitor. It looks very much like a webcam. Then, you place a small silver dot of reflective material on your forehead or on your glasses. When the unit is active, the unit on top of the monitor will sense the position of the reflective dot. You will then be able to control the mouse movement by moving your head. This will give you hands-free control of the mouse. In order to click with the mouse, you can use either a separate plugged-in switch, voice commands, or the dwell click option. To use a head mouse successfully, you need to have very good head control and a lot of patience. It is usually recommended only for those people who have no other alternatives for mouse, mouse control. For example, we have several clients who are high-level quadriplegics who use this device. Another hands-free pointer is the Jouse. This device was originally developed by the Neil Squire Society in the early 1990s and is now being marketed by a Canadian company in Newfoundland. The Jouse is a joystick mouse that is controlled by your mouse. It has a long arm which is attached to a desk and a joystick which has a small straw coming out of the center of it. After moving the joystick with either your teeth or your chin, you then sip or puff on the straw to perform a left or right click. It also has a drag lock feature so that you will not run out of breath when trying to highlight or move an object. Built into the unit is a Morse code typing option. With this option turned on, you can sip and puff the dots and dashes of Morse code to type on the screen. Basically, this unit provides full and dependent access to both mouse functions and keyboard functions for someone who may be a high-level quadriplegic. There are some other assistive technology mice available which do not fit into any of the categories we've discussed so far. One of these is called the roller mouse. This mouse is built into a unit which sits along the front edge of your keyboard. In the center of the unit is a rolling bar which also slides back and forth. This bar is what controls the movement of the mouse. With this unit, there is no extended reaching for mouse control. It takes up a minimum amount of space on your desk. The actual roller bar requires a very light touch to control it. 
This mouse would be suitable for someone who has a limited range of motion but good fine motor skills. For example, a person with muscular dystrophy may find this mouse to be a good option. Now let's look at a couple of the software solutions for mousing problems. First, let's examine the options available through the Windows Mousing Properties. Through the Mouse Properties dialog box, you can change from the standard right-handed mouse buttons to left-handed mouse buttons. Here you can adjust the double-click speed. This is the speed required for repeated clicks to be interpreted as a double-click. Please note that if you slow down the double-click speed, it will not impact people who double-click quickly. This is also where you can adjust the movement of the mouse to match your hand movement. If you feel like the mouse is zooming around the screen out of control, then it's recommended that you slow the, the mouse speed down. However, if the mouse feels heavy and sluggish, it's a good idea to speed it up. You want the mouse movement to feel natural and controlled. All of these options are built into the Windows operating system. Another software option for mouse control that is built into the Windows operating system is called Mouse Keys. When the Mouse Key option is turned on, you can control the mouse movement with the keys of the number pad located on the right side of your keyboard. The numbers around the outside of the pad control mouse movement direction, while the number 5 in the center provides a left click. The plus key on the number pad provides a double click. Mouse Keys is built into the Windows operating system. This option provides very controlled movement of the mouse and it is suitable for someone who has difficulty using the mouse but can type on the keyboard. Dwell clicking is another software option for improving mouse control. This software is available either for purchase or as freeware. If you're having difficulty holding the mouse still while you click the button, this might be a good option for you. Also, if you experience pain from clicking the mouse button many times, this software will give you some relief from that action. Personally, I use this software whenever I'm working on the computer and will be doing a lot of mouse clicking. It allows me to move the mouse to various locations and just pause for a moment to wait for the click. This concludes our introduction to assistive technology mice. This is the last of the four presentations making up Introduction to Assistive Technology for Computer Access. If you have any questions on this presentation, please do not hesitate to contact your assigned facilitator. Thank you.